Good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremlin News at 5 tonight. I'm Mark Hanrahan and I'm Whitney Ward. Gas prices are continuing to rise amid inflation and the ongoing Russian invasion of Ukraine and Washington and Idaho certainly not immune to those rising prices. Kremlin News Ian Smay spoke with some drivers today about how this is all impacting them. Ian. Most of the gas stations I drove to today in the downtown Spokane area had gas at $3.99 per gallon. Some of them went as high as $4.19 per gallon, and according to AAA, prices could continue to rise, and it's drivers that are left to pay those prices. With inflation and the ongoing Russian invasion of Ukraine, gas prices across the country are skyrocketing. The Pacific Northwest has been no different. Some commuters have changed their driving habits in response. I mean, you know, it's affected me a little bit um, with regard to, to travel and things like that. But, you know, I mean, everything's going up. Prices are going up with everything. So it's kind of like just following suit. But, you know, we do try to drive a little less, I guess, and, and carpool as much as we can to because of the price. Here in Washington, AAA says the average price for a gallon of gas is $4.49. In Spokane, it's a bit lower, sitting at $4.06. That's still lower than the prices in Seattle, where the average is up to $4.63. Uh, I'm from Seattle, and this is still less expensive than the gas price over in Seattle. So to me, this is still pretty inexpensive. Over in Idaho, it's a similar story. According to AAA, the average price for a gallon of gas is $3.96. Those living in the Coeur d'Alene area have it a little better, sitting at $3.85 per gallon on average. Even with gas prices projected to go up even more, some people are pressing on as normal. I mean, I wouldn't say worried about it, but, uh, you know, it's definitely something I'm aware of, but it's not going to stop me from doing anything. According to AAA, Idaho's average gas price could go over $4 a gallon as soon as tomorrow. If prices continue to rise in Idaho, we could see a new record for the price of a gallon of gas on average in the gem state. According to AAA, the current record for an unleaded regular gallon of gas in Idaho is $4.07. Reporting in Spokane, Ian Smay, Prep 2 News. All right, Ian, thank you very much. And in other top stories tonight, a car crashed into a semi this morning and was dragged down I-90 in Liberty Lake. Traffic was backed up for more than three miles during the morning commute. The Washington State Patrol says a car came up behind a semi truck trying to pass it, but then losing control, hitting the median before crashing into a second car. That car is the one that then crashed into the semi. Hit that vehicle and forced it underneath the semi truck. And then after that point of uh, impact, it was drug underneath the semi truck for uh, quite a ways until the semi truck came to a, a safe stop. Amazingly, the driver in that car survived and only had minor injuries. No one else was hurt. My goodness. Well, the last day of Freeman impact statements has been rescheduled for June 6. Statements were originally supposed to wrap up today. Now the final survivors of that shooting will have to wait until June 6. It's just another setback for the victims who have been trying to find at least some closure in this case since 2017 when the gunman opened fire on his classmates, killing one student and injuring three others. After the statements finished, the judge will hand down Caleb Sharp the sentence. As for why the final impact statements are being delayed, we're still trying to track down a reason. So if and when we do get an answer, we'll be sure to pass it along. Today, the Pentagon announced 500 additional U.S. troops are being deployed to Europe because of the ongoing Russian invasion of Ukraine. And those defensive forces will include 150 airmen from Fairchild Air Force Base, along with KC-135 refueling planes from the base as well. Those troops being sent to reinforce and bolster the defense capabilities of the NATO alliance. The Pentagon says it's unsure right now how many KC-135s will be sent. They also said the Pentagon will continue to shift resources as needed. All right, let's talk weather now. It was a beautiful day across the inland northwest with plenty of sunshine, but don't get too comfortable just yet. Another blast of winter weather heading our way. Let's send things out to meteorologist Jeremy Lagoo for a look at the forecast. Jeremy. Oh, hi, Mark. Hi, Whitney, and hi, everybody watching from back at home right now. Soaking in some of these beautiful end of day rays out here. But as Mark mentioned, enjoy them while you can right now. We sit at 52 degrees here in Spokane, believe it or not. It is a nice, mild, warm 52. I'm sitting outside with just my suit coat on, and I am more than plenty warm. But in the days to come, you're going to see me back here in a winter jacket because we're talking much colder air on the way. We're in the mid-40s 
in North Idaho, up near 60 in Moses Lake and in Wenatchee, mid 50s still. It's that kind of warm thanks to our overall weather pattern. It's a big ridge of high pressure, but if you look off to the north and up to the east, we've got another storm coming in. And what that means for us is something known as a backdoor cold front. That means it doesn't have much moisture. It doesn't really have a moisture tap, but what this thing does have is a lot of cold air. And what that's going to do is help squeeze some of the moisture from the atmosphere. So above 2,500 feet, we're gonna see some snow stick, mainly to grassy surfaces. And I don't think until you get over 4th of July or Lookout Pass, are you going to see that snow stick to the roads. It's just too warm. And even in the days to come, it's just going to be too warm. Coldest day of the week looks to be Wednesday. We warm back up as we head into the weekend, but just know today is warm. Next few days, a little cloudier and a little cooler. Jeremy, thank you very much. Well, that was the sound of the Spokane Symphony playing Ukraine's national anthem. The Spokane Symphony hosted its Masterworks concert this weekend. Originally, the concert was going to open with the first notes ever played by the symphony in 1945, but instead began with that surprise tribute. Concert attendees gasped and applauded when Spokane Symphony conductor James Lowe announced the symphony would be playing the Ukrainian national anthem. Almost instantly, that crowd there rose to their feet, as you could see. Lowe says playing the anthem celebrates creativity in dark times. Well, music, I think, reminds us of the best of humanity. And at times like this, I think we really need to be reminded that, that we are, as a species, creative and beautiful and that we are a community. Before playing the anthem, Lowe also quoted legendary composer and conductor Leonard Bernstein saying, quote, this is our reply to violence to make music more intensely, more beautifully and more devotedly than ever, end quote. In the meantime, a local coffee shop raised $35,000 for Ukraine. Hundreds of people stopped by Cedar Coffee this weekend to show their support. Cedar Coffee announced all through the weekend that 100% of their Saturday sales would go to support Ukrainian refugees. Now on Saturday and Sunday, huge lines then formed. They wrapped around the building. Some people waiting for up to an hour just to donate. Those in line said that they were grateful for the opportunity to support those who have lost everything in this war. When I saw that there was a local option that all of the sales from uh, Cedar are going to support Ukrainians, uh, it just seemed like a no-brainer for me to show up and help out. And Spokane Mayor Nadine Woodward also stopped by that Ukrainian-owned shop to thank the owner for helping raise so much money to help those in Ukraine. Cedar Coffee is going to actually be accepting donations throughout this entire week. Then they will send the total amount that they raise next Monday. Wow, good for them. That's an incredible dollars. Wow, no kidding. Beautiful. Well, we have received many requests from people wanting to know how to donate to the people of Ukraine, and we have some local realtors in town collecting small items for the children who have fled Ukraine with their families. So the, Real, the Realty One group is filling shoeboxes right now with small toys and kid-friendly items. And they'll be sent to Poland, where many families of this Ukrainian crisis have now gone. The founder and CEO of that company is actually from Poland and will be sending the boxes to one of their own family members to help then distribute those to refugee children. The company is collecting through Wednesday evening at 5 p.m. You can drop off kid-friendly items that will fit in a shoebox. Some recommendations include small toys, crayons, hats, and the address, by the way, is 1414 West Garland, Suite 100. Again, collections will wrap up Wednesday at 5 p.m. The Realty One Group will send out the cheer boxes later this week. And by the way, you can also get that information on where to send those on our website. Just go mm -hmm. to crem.com. In the meantime, the Zags are battling it out tonight as at the West Coast Conference in Las Vegas. We've got live coverage, so stick around. Don't go anywhere. Crem 2 News continues right after the break.